thank you for another day's journey. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for the prayers of Cheryl and Shelley, dear Lord. Thank you, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Be with those people, Lord, that perish down in Florida. Be with those families, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Brothers and sisters, we are back again. It's another Wednesday. We are still in the book of Acts. We are in the book of Acts, the 16th chapter, verses 32 through 40. The book of Acts. The book of Acts. In the Greek praxis, the exploits of extraordinary men of God. The same book of Acts, the same praxis. And one, the first chapter, the second verse says, unto the day in which he was taken up after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. So we are still in the book of Acts, the book of Praxis, Acts, the 16th chapter, verses 32 through 40. We left you last week where uh, Paul and Silas had been beaten and dragged out the marketplace by the authorities. And the Bible says in verse 30, 22, they were beaten with rods. And the reason why they were beaten with rods is because there was a young woman that had a, uh, a certain spirit possessed with a divination and it brought her master as much profit. But what happened was uh, when she met Paul and met Silas. Hallelujah. She changed. Isn't it something that when people meet the Lord, they change? Isn't it something people don't understand and people can't understand that? But when you meet the Lord, you change. Even in 2021, I guarantee you there are people this year who thought one way last year, but when they met the Lord, when the Lord came into their life, life, they irrevocably changed. Hallelujah. So they were beaten and thrown in jail uh, because she had uh, they had changed her. She'd been healed. And, but, but here it is. By midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And uh, they were not going to be undaunted. That means they were not going to be not changed by what they went. They were going to be the servants for the Lord they had been. So they brought them, the earthquake came deep in the midnight hour, and it says uh, the chains came off, and everyone's chains were loosed in verse 26. But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, do yourselves no harm, we are here. And he called for a light, and they came in trembling. And what happened, it said, sir, what must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you shall, in the King James, it says, you shall be saved, or you will be saved. And here, they, uh, Paul utters these words, these epic words, these immortal words. What must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in Yeshua HaMashiach. Believe in the Lord Savior, Jesus Christ. And you shall be saved. And that's where we begin today, going into verse 32. Then they spoke the word of the Lord with him, and to all who were in his house, they spoke uh, these words, and here it is. How many of you know the word of God? There's power in the word of There's nothing like the power of the word of God. I've been in situations in my life where it looked like everything was going to go sideways, but somebody spoke the word of God. I watched my father uh, uh, be in situations that were getting out of hand, and he spoke the word of God. There's power in the word of God. There's, I can't, but that, that, people don't seem to understand that. But let's look from Genesis to Malachi in the Old Testament. Look at the New Testament. Matthew, 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 through the book of Revelation. There's power in the word of God. There's power in the word of God. There's power in the word of God. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and all who were in his house. Right there. That, and here it is. People 
today and say, well, we need to have a big revival and invite everybody in town. How many of you know the best revivals can be sometimes in our own home? It can be sometimes in our own friends, sometimes in our own compadres, sometimes in people that we love and care about. Just start with them. Just start, you don't have to go out there and do it. Just start with it. Just, just start with it. Just start with just start. Just, just start. Just start. Just start with them. Kid folks, kids, God kids, grandkids, nieces and nephews, brothers and sisters. Sometimes it's just the people in our own sound by the war, who we are, our own people. Just start with them with the word. Hallelujah. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Now verse 33. And he took the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and his family were baptized. In the middle of the night they washed their stripes because they had been beaten. Go back to verse 22. They had been beaten with rods. So they washed them. They, they cared to their stripes. They, they, they took them and the Bible says that immediately he and his family were baptized. You mean to tell me in the middle of the night, all of a sudden, they were going to baptize? Yes, that's what I'm saying. In the Hebrew, it is the Crossman Bitspot. Here it was. You are going to have a baptism in the middle of the night because these people were saved. It's one of the first acts of obedience is baptism. That's why I can't understand all these, these YouTube that people are arguing. Ain't nothing to argue about. Get people saved, baptize them, and then go on to the next person. People have to stop. Here's a psychological term. People have to stop dissecting the word of God. Every time somebody comes up with something they don't agree with, well, let me see. I'm going to speculate. No, don't speculate. Give them God's word. I just got through telling you there's power through them us in the word of God. Here it was in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night, they, they washed their, their stripes, they healed their wounds, they washed their wounds, they took care of them, they saw to them. Then they had a baptism meeting, hallelujah. Have you ever been to a baptism, a late night baptism? I have. It's nothing like the, the spirit. When the spirit comes over that meeting, it's, it's just like something you can't even talk about. We need to maybe start having more lockdowns at night, more shut-ins at night, more all-night prayer services, maybe some all-night early morning baptisms. Amen? Amen and amen. And he brought them, verse 34 says, and he brought them into his house and he set food before them and he rejoiced having believed in God with all of his household. Verse 1 Peter, the first verse, verse 25 says, But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which was what preached to you. They had went there. They had healed their wounds. They worked on their wounds. He told them about the Lord Jesus Christ. He spoke a word over them. They were baptized. And now he was giving them some hospitality. That's the best way to put it. He was Rejoice, having believed in God. Rejoice, Alleginio, Alleginio, Alleginio. He rejoiced. Ooh, hallelujah. Well, you know, when people, you we used to join church when I was a boy, there was a time of rejoicing. You'd even see people shouting. you see people, they'd walk around and word welcome them into the Word of God. Somebody got them a Bible. Somebody got them an old hymnal. Somebody said, here's some good tracks. Put these tracks in your Bible. Put them in your purse. Put them in your wallet. Share the word of God. Go and learn as much about the word of God as you can. Because they rejoice when people came to God. People today don't rejoice anymore. Oh, good, you joined church. Well, we're going to see. We're going to have a coffee clutch down the streets. And we're going to talk about investments. That's what's wrong with the church now. Nobody's rejoicing anymore. Nobody's happy anymore. Nobody's shouting anymore when people come to the household. When people join the church, when nobody gives their life and pledges their life to Jesus Christ. When nobody says, I'm developing a new relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 35. And when it was the day the magistrates sent the officers, they sent their local police, they sent their other officers in saying, let those men go. Now, the concept of clemency, which is what was happening with Paul and Cyrus, 
is something that was very indigenous to the Roman Empire. It showed that there was a level of civility even with people that went to jail. Now, most of the, before that, going back to some of the other uh, societies before the Roman Empire, they didn't have that. So when you see this, this is their, they're showing clemency, let them go. They're, they're, we're not gonna, we're not gonna charge them anymore. We're not gonna uh, beat on them anymore. Let them go. Because here it is, what they had did was wrong and it will be proved in the word of God. The magistrate said, let them go now, therefore, depart. So the keeper of the prison reported these words to Paul, saying, the magistrates have said to you, go. Now, therefore, depart and go. Go in peace. Shalom in the Hebrew. Eri. Eri in the, um, um, in the, in the Greek. Go in peace. Just leave leave. They wanted to stay quiet when we just leave. When we started for what we did, we started for what down. Leave. 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 But the Apostle Paul said to them in verse 37, they have beaten us openly an uncondemned Roman. Now they weren't supposed to have done that. Paul was a Roman citizen. It would be like uh, if you were to go into certain parts of Mexico or South America, because I'm an American citizen, I have certain rights, and therefore, the whole, unless I do something that's so egregious and so bad that people say, well, maybe we need to stop and look at what this guy did. What did he do? What's going on here? This is what, this is civility that we're talking about here with the Apostle Paul. They've beaten us, they've thrown us into prisons, and now do this, then they put us out secretly. No, indeed. Let them come themselves and get us out. You come, come, come to us, come to us for what you've done. Come, 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 and 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 and, and, and apologize to us. Verse thirty-eight. And the officers told these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they had heard they were Romans. They knew they were wrong. In life today, if anybody has any dignity or decency about it. When they've done wrong in any way, shape, form, or fashion, there should be something of their conscience should bother them. How many of you today see things going on in the world and people's consciences don't seem to bother them anymore? They do whatever they want to do. They see what they want to do. But if if Jesus is the Lord and Savior, like, there ought to be something that should be the Holy Spirit. And when we do wrong, our conscience should say, I'm wrong. Our conscience should say, I've been wrong. I've done something wrong. This isn't right. And our conscience should beat us up to the point where we say, well, I need to make this thing right. That's why when I see people in church act in a certain way, I wonder if they've even been born again. Hallelujah. Because when Jesus comes on the inside of you, it's just like at the beginning of the text. What must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and we shall be saved. When the Holy Ghost comes inside of us, something different has happened. Something different has changed. Something has occurred in us. We cannot be the same. We have to, how can I say this? We have to be strong. We have to know that when Jesus comes inside of us, we are changed. We can't be the same. We aren't the same. When the Holy Ghost gets inside of us, we changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were Romans. Verse 39. Then they came and pleaded with them and brought them out and asked them, please depart from the city. Please leave the city. We know we didn't give you a trial. We know we've done wrong, but in the name of peace, in the name of Irene, leave. Shalom. Leave. Please leave. Verse 40. So when they went out of the prison, they entered into the house of Lydia. Now, back in the early part of the chapter, when they met Lydia, she was a person who was a seller and dealer in purple. And we went into that uh, in depth back during that time. They returned back to Lydia's house and they received more hospitality. And when they had seen the brethren, 
They encouraged them and they departed. They encouraged them. Parakelio. They encouraged them. Sometimes when we've gone through things, when we've gone through the trials and tribulations of the world, sometimes we don't want to encourage anybody. We want to be petted up and we want people to pat us on the back. But my brothers and my sisters, sometimes your greater blessing is when you encourage others no matter what you went through. I remember a number of years ago when my father passed away and my mother went through the time when they went through the repast. She was going around encouraging people. She had lost her husband. She had buried or funeralized her husband that day. She had buried her, her husband, <clears throat> but she was still going around encouraging people. My brothers and sisters, that song we sing, encourage yourself in the Lord when things are not the best for you. Encourage yourself with the Lord. How can you encourage yourself, preacher? You don't understand what I've been through. You don't understand the trials and tribulations I've been through. You don't understand I'm broke. You don't understand I've gone through a health crisis. You don't understand my children are driving me crazy along with my grandchildren. You don't understand they're going to get rid of me on that job. But it does not matter what you've been through in your life. We've got to learn to encourage one another. No matter, like Paul and Silas, they were beaten with stripes. They were beaten with rods. And they, here they were been beaten, puked and scorned. But they still had time to tell a man, what must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. My brothers and sisters, no matter what you go through in life, Still and take time to encourage other people. You see our young people and the way that some of them are living their lives. Don't beat them up. Don't talk about them so bad. But get somewhere in your prayer closet and pray for them. And when you have time, encourage them in the Lord. There's a blessing when we encourage people in the Lord. No matter what, take time, my brothers and sisters. Paradilo, to encourage people in the Lord. I've been down and I've been out. I've been puked. I've been scorned. I've been broke. I've been homeless. I've been a whole lot of things. But here it is, my greater blessing came when I took time to encourage other people. Encourage people in the Lord. No matter what, no matter how bad it gets, learn to encourage people in the Lord. Some people will say, ah, I can't make it. Yes, you can make it. We're going to encourage you in the Lord. I'm going to pray for you more and more. I'm going to give you more scripture more and more. I know I got an extra piece of money. I'll share it with you. Here it is. Encourage people. My brothers and my sisters, they encourage the brethren. And to go over into the 17th chapter, and it talked about now that when they went there in the synagogue of the Jews, then Paul as his custom went there for three Shabbat, three Sabbaths. He didn't go nowhere and say, woe is me. Why did they do that for me? He encouraged those people in the Lord. And I'm telling you today, no matter how bad it gets, no matter what goes on, encourage people in the Lord. Encourage people in the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He relieves Lord my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. For his name say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell, I will dwell.